All right, so this is the review packet for Unit 4. Uh, so a couple of things about the countries. Um, I said this in class. One of the interesting things about Colombia is that it not only has a Pacific coast, it also has a Caribbean coast. Um, it's the only country in South America that has that. And um, that kind of brings up my next point, which is Panama is the last of the countries of South, uh, Central America. And then Venezuela and Colombia are starting uh, off South America for us. So we're leaving behind Central America and North America with Mexico. And we're moving down into South America, starting with Venezuela and Colombia. And of course, we'll go to Ecuador next. Anyway, um, the population that's the largest is Colombia with 49 million. Venezuela is pretty far behind with 31 million, but Panama just way out there. And you can tell just by the sheer size of Panama, it's a much smaller country, so they're not going to have the same um, possibilities as these two. So next question, of course, which country is the smallest would be Panama with 4 million. The capital of Venezuela is Caracas, and the capital of Colombia is Bogota. I did not mention the capital of Panama because it's Ciudad de Panima, Panima, Panama, uh, Panama. There we go, Ciudad de Panama. Uh, so Panama City is the capital of Panama. Go figure. Too easy. It won't be a test question. Colors of the flag are blue, yellow, and red. That would be Venezuela and Colombia. They have the same colors and look similar because they were all. <coughs> Uh, part of Gran Colombia back in the very, very long time ago. So uh, there's a couple other countries that have similar flags. Uh, the colors of the flag are blue, white, and red. Excuse me, white, blue, and red. That's Panama. The Balboa is from Panama. The Peso is from Colombia. And the Bolivar is from Venezuela, named after Simon Bolivar. And that probably should have an accent. All right, datos interesantes. Uh, Panamá es el único lugar donde se puede ver la salida del sol en el Océano Pacífico y la puesta del sol en el Océano Atlántico. Panamá is the only country that has the sun rise in the Pacific Ocean and the sun set in the Atlantic Ocean, and you can see it from that country. Uh, Colombia has the pico y placa, which is basically that certain license plates can't drive on certain days or certain times and it helps with the traffic congestion and placa means license plate and Venezuela's interesting uh, fact is that Canaima is one of its national parks and it's one of the largest national parks in the world and you can't see the rest of it I'm sorry but Canaima that national park also has Salto Angel which is Angel Falls and that's the highest uh, waterfall in the world. All right, so artículos de exportaciones. Uh, exports from Panama are bananas, iron, right there, hierro, uh, camarones, shrimp, and harina, which is flour. And Colombia's exports are coffee, emeralds, petroleum, and flowers, but they said specifically orquídeas. Uh, orquídeas, orchids, are a uh, big export of Colombia. Venezuela's exports are metals, chemical products, and agricultural products, which would be like produce. Famous authors uh, from and artists from Panama are Ricardo Miró. Artists would be Alfredo Sinclair and Guillermo Trujillo. Colombia, you've got Gabriel Garcia Márquez and Fernando Botero, and I think you've got somebody named Obregón. Uh, here's the important thing. Gabriel García Márquez won a Nobel Prize for his book, and he is definitely, there's a few, there's um, Isabel Allende, who we'll learn about in Chile, but before her, probably more important than her, he's the most celebrated Latin American artist of all times. She's probably second. He's the first, though. Very, very important guy. Uh, and I love Botero, y'all know that. Uh, Venezuela has Adrián González, and it has Carlos Cristíaz and Armando Reverón. And now we are going to move into vocabulary. 
So in this vocabulary, I actually got out my crossword puzzle from part one, and I used those hints to make these. So you can either get your hojas de concepto and turn to part one, and that's your word bank, or you can get out your crossword puzzle because it's probably going to be the same clue, and that might help you get it filled out pretty quickly. But this is what the vocab section of your test looks like, um, except for the fact that it's four or five at a time and you're matching them with their answer instead of just having to write the answer in the blank. But the definition kind of thing is set up the same way, so you got to be able to understand what it says right here. So take precautions to avoid a sickness would be to prevent, prevenir, to feel tired not have any energy to do anything. If I were talking about nouns, I think debilidad is a good one, but I think here the best fit is cansarse, and that's to get tired. Uh, hacer una cirugía is to do a surgery, and another word for that is operar. Perder sangre, lose blood after a cut, would be to bleed, sangrar. Expeller, not expeller, sorry about that typo, the uh, so expel the content of your stomach would be vomitar sensibility extreme sensibility to certain drugs or foods would be uh, an allergy so ser alérgico a and using the nose know how something smells how something smells that would be to smell something and I know that I've listed the verb in the sentence, but huele is so weird when it's conjugated, it doesn't look the same. So I figured that would trick y'all. Uh, ver o chequear un paciente para saber qué pasa, uh, qué le pasa. So look at or check a patient to know uh, what's wrong with them would be to examinar. And an action of expelling air from the lungs uh, in a noisy or violent form or way. I think toser is probably the best one, but I've also got estornudar listed there because, I mean, sneezing to me feels more violent than coughing, but I feel like in your little packets, I had included something about y la nariz, and I think when the nose is involved, it's sneezing, when it's not, maybe coughing. So that's maybe the difference between the two, but I would not have you choose between those two probably on a test, all right? Next part, vocabulary three and four, and again, again, I'm using um, parts three and four, see, parte tres, parte cuatro, of the vocab, along with the parts three and four quiz that I gave y'all, so you could get those out to look at them and study them. Again, I mean, you're probably watching this video like, sweet, I don't have to do anything else. I don't like to give you actual test questions on a review. I feel like that's cheating. So um, I am trying to show you the way the test is set up um, so that you can study, but I would definitely suggest you go back through the crossword puzzles and the quizzes that have definitions like this because they're going to make it a lot easier for you to be comfortable when you see the definitions on the test. All right, so back to the PowerPoint. So um, Contracción involuntaria y doloroso con mucho dolor de un músculo. Okay, so uh, involuntary contraction or uh, painful, sorry, involuntary and painful contraction con, that should be a separated word right there. A lot of pain of a muscle would be a cramp, calambre. Uh, a card guarantee a guarantee card in case someone needs medical help. A guarantee card is saying, hey, I'm insuring this person, they will be paid for. So that's insurance. Uh, a synonym of unguento is pomada. So unguento is an ointment, so is a pomada, or so is pomada. Um, and sinónimo de operación, Another uh, word for operation is cirugía, surgery. A sensation of having a lot of heat and then all of a sudden being really cold would be escalofríos, the, the chills. And elevación, uh, elevation of, excuse me, normal body temp would be fiebre. 
stopping the heart or heart stops, blood stops passing through the heart, ataque cardíaco. A uh, headache, very strong, sensibility to light, nausea, migraña, a uh, sharp pain in the throat accompanied by fever and escalofríos, uh, that's a misspelling, escalofríos, uh, chills would be faringitis estreptocoxica, uh, that should have an accent on the O right there, uh, more serious than a fracture or a sprain would be a broken bone. Inflammation of the lungs would be pulmonia. Uh, sorry, hueso roto on number 19. And fever, nausea, chills, and sore throat would be uh, the gripe, la gripe, which would be the flu. All right, moving right along. Okay, so as I told most of you in class, and I'll tell you again, um, you know, it might seem like you're not really sure what I'm pointing to in these pictures. The thing that you want to do is just make sure that you're aware of what is around that area because, for example, number five is pretty tricky. Am I asking you for the wrist or for the hand? Um, I'm not going to give you the choice of wrist and hand in the same multiple choice section. So I would just write both of them down, and that way you know that they're both in that area. Um, okay, so number one, ojo, two, a oreja, three, hombro, and I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be anything else, but if for some reason you thought that I was pointing to the neck, then that would be cuello, or garganta for throat. Number four is corazón, the heart, that is a heart right there, I drew it myself, boop, because it wasn't in the original picture. Number five, muñeca, which is wrist, or mano, which is hand. That's what I was talking about before. Number six, is it pointing to the leg? Is it pointing to the shin? I think I'm probably pointing to the shin, so I'm going to say espinilla. But in case that's not what it is, then pierna for leg. Number eight, again, is it ankle or heel? I think I'm pointing to the heel, which is the uh, talon. But, oh, look at that. Somehow, I, there we go. Uh, somehow those went backwards. So, any, oh, that's because it, I skipped number seven. Okay, so pantorrilla would be um, the calf. Again, if I'm pointing to the leg, then it would be pierna, but I think back there I'm pointing to pantorrilla, the, the calf. Okay, so down here, again, I think I'm pointing to the heel, because that's literally where the, elbow, the arrow is touching. So talon, but ankle, which would be around here, would be tobillo, and the foot itself would be pie. Again, I'm not going to give you all three of those choices. Okay, the next one, number nine. It's either pointing to the bone or the thigh. So bone is hueso and thigh is muslo. And again, number 10, I think in this one I'm actually pointing to the thigh and not the leg. But again, you've got muslo for thigh and pierna for leg. Uh, number 11, that's the hígado, the liver. Number 12, I think I'm going for antebrazo and not just brazo. If you'll notice, the things that I'm not talking about in this section are the ones that you learned in Spanish one. I'm kind of trying to test you over the new stuff. Go figure. Uh, and then number 13, it's either boca or lengua for tongue. And that is it on vocab. We're going to stop the video here, and we'll pick up with direct object pronouns and commands.